Hello. Welcome to my report on the solar PV and Powerwall performance at our property for November 2020, which has seemed to be as gloomy as October, but there have been worse Novembers during the past decade. Firstly, here's the graph which shows the electrical energy coming into the property on each day of the month, with the figures coming from grid and solar meter readings. In this video, I'll often use the word units in place of kilowatt hours, as it's much easier to say. The total solar production this month was 221 units, which was just over a quarter of the total electrical energy that came into the property. The average per day was 7.4 units, despite the fact that there were seven days in the month when the daily production was less than three units. Eight units were exported to the grid, according to the Tesla app, which was less than 1% of the total energy coming in, but still around 3.6% of the solar energy produced. But, as I mentioned last month, my Tesla app never records a daily value of zero export, so the minimum reported export I could have expected was 0.1 units on each of the 30 days, i.e. 3 kilowatt hours. 621 units were imported from the grid during the month, up another 24% on last month, but only 13 units of peak electricity were used. Drawing 98% of the electricity at off-peak rate seems like a success to me. 100% is unattainable at this time of year because a 7.5 kilowatt electric shower is used in the annex during early peak time on most weekdays and the power wall can only deliver 5 kilowatts and there is usually negligible solar contribution at that time. This next graph shows where the energy used by the property came from, with the figures being reported by the Tesla app. The storage heaters in the annex gobble up nearly half of the energy. The figures suggest that a quarter of the energy used came from solar, thankfully agreeing with the meter readings, with 12% being used directly and the remainder via the power wall. Overall, 35.5% of the energy used was said to have come via the power wall, around the same as last month, as the battery performs its winter duty of time-shifting off-peak energy for use at peak time. This graph shows the energy reported by the Tesla app to be going into and out of the power wall each day, with the expected around 90% of the energy going in during the month coming back out. My power wall charges at around 1.7 kilowatts, so it is in fact not possible to charge from the grid to 100% from zero during the seven off-peak hours. Does anyone have a different charge rate? I don't know whether this power setting is fixed or is something that can be changed in the installation settings. Here's the self power graph, defined as energy going to the property directly from solar or from the power wall, so it excludes energy being taken directly from the grid. As mentioned last month, I kept the power wall in self powered mode rather than return to advanced time based control for the winter, so the app can't provide me with figures for peak and off peak times. The Tesla app says that the proportion of self power over the month was 48%, but only 12.4% originated as solar. Here's the solar southwest production over the years since 2012. This month's figure of 94 is the 6th of November out of the 9 we've had. The cumulative view of the year's production shows that 2020 is still in the lead. In fact, the year-to-date production of 3,476 units now surpasses the full year output of every other year except 2018. This graph shows the percentage of the total daily solar energy produced by the old Southwest Array since the introduction of the Southeast Array. The reddish line shows the proportion expected according to the peak ratings of the two arrays, 3.92 kilowatts as opposed to 3.05 kilowatts. Halfway through the month, the uptick in the curve which was seen last month had disappeared, with the expected downward trend having been reinstated. However, the gloomy end of the month saw the curve start to head upwards again. This is why I used to stress to my two students that percentages, especially when quoted by politicians, had to be examined carefully alongside the figures behind those percentages. For example, why did the old Southwest Array produce 70% of the solar energy on the 29th? Here's a different graph showing the same information, but it's the raw figures rather than percentages. During the summer, the old Southwest Array, represented by the yellow squares, dominates the top of the scatter graph. Heading towards winter, the orange diamonds of the new Southeast Array, despite its lower rating, are usually higher, as the array is on a steeper roof. 
back to that 70% on the 29th, which was a dismal solar day, with only 0.9 kilowatt hours being produced in total during the whole day. A half hour of slightly less thick cloud on such a day will make a lot of difference and move the point up or down a long way depending on when it occurs. And no direct sun will favour the larger array in catching the few scattered photons which are flying around. Also, I suspect that the new southeast system switches off sooner than the old southwest one as light levels diminish. To finish, here are short glimpses of the graph showing daily energy input, the same as the first graph but with lots more bars, since the 1st of February, and the daily solar production over that same period. The end of the year doesn't look good so far compared to the spring. That's it for this month, just two more to go to complete the year to 31st of January. I'll leave you with the energy uses graphs from the Tesla app for each day of November and hope to see you again next month. Meanwhile, have a safe and Merry Christmas.